And uh, for the most part, these are a lot of tools and techniques that I use when I'm uh, building extensions or building a website for someone. And it's um, just a lot of things that I use to um, help uh, keep track of the code that I'm writing and, and just write better code. Um, but uh, you don't necessarily, even if you write just HTML or CSS or anything that's beyond uh, configuring Joomla. Uh, so like if you're, if you're modifying any file directly, um, there are tools and techniques in here that can help you. Um, so, a little bit about me. Um, I'm a PHP and JavaScript programmer, and uh, I'm currently a freelance uh, Joomla developer. And I started with Mambo uh, almost six years exactly ago uh, when it was Mambo, and then uh, switched over to Joomla when, uh, when we had the fork. And a lot of what I've been trying to do recently has been to uh, do a little bit of bridging between the Joomla and the PHP communities. Um, I've been going to a lot of these PHP conferences, uh, like uh, PHP Tech in Chicago, and, uh, and I go to this uh, local PHP developers group. And I, I tell people that I use Joomla, and I, I get some funny looks, and people don't always understand why, uh, why we like Joomla and, uh, and what we use it for. But as time has been going on, uh, people have been looking at it more, and uh, we've, we've become a little bit too big to ignore. Um, and at the same time, uh, we've been learning uh, more of the, the better practices in PHP, and uh, we're beginning to, to gain some respect over there. Uh, so uh, what I'm trying to do is bring some of the techniques that are a little bit more common in the PHP community to, uh, to Joomla itself, and, uh, and this is part of that. So uh, a little bit about this talk and, and how it works. If you write any kind of code whatsoever, like I was saying before, um, like HTML or CSS, uh, PHP, um, anything that's on the file system itself, uh, this talk can help you because there are tools that you can use that uh, can help you keep track of your files and, uh, and what modifications you're making to them and, um, it, and it can help you that way. Um, there are a lot of tools that are out there currently that uh, software developers use to manage their code. Um, but the problem is, uh, one thing I found in the, the Joomla community especially is that a lot of us are on our own. Like we, uh, a lot of us are sometimes very small teams of maybe half a dozen people or, or one person. Um, you know, just off on our own doing programming for, for clients or um, a lot of times I'm, I'm doing work for a design firm that's looking for, uh, for some code support. And uh, so that means that uh, a lot of times we're on our own and we're not necessarily working with uh, a large team of programmers. Um, that they would normally need to use these tools right away. Um, so yeah, uh, so even though a lot of these tools are built for larger teams, um, there's still sometimes when you can just take a, a piece of the tool and use that uh, rather than using uh, some of the larger uh, team features of it and, and still get some benefit out of it to uh, help you develop your, your code even if it's just one person uh, writing the code. Uh, so, uh, what we'll do is we'll run through these topics. I, I have about eight or nine of them uh, with some demos. And um, uh, I'll take a quick poll each time and we'll see who uses these techniques or, or tools. And if a lot of people are familiar, I won't spend as much time on them. And if nobody's familiar, we'll, we'll dig into it a little bit. So, uh, we'll get this started. So first of all, uh, I think this is the absolute bare minimum that you need to keep in mind whenever you're developing a Joomla website. Um, that you need, uh, this is specifically if you are um, deploying a, a website rather than developing an extension. So uh, show of hands here, who uses a dev site that's separate from their live site when developing a website? Okay, that is pretty much everyone. Um, so yeah, uh, if you don't already do that, you, you definitely want to, uh, to separate that so that uh, you can test things um, on your dev site before you move over to live. And uh, if you have hosting where it's difficult to, uh, to make a subdomain, uh, you want to move over to a host that uh, I've seen, especially like the, the cPanel based hosts, will uh, put the subdomain folder in as a subfolder of your main domain. And uh, that can get very messy very quickly, uh, especially if you're trying to back up your live site through something like a Keep a Backup. 
um, you have to go through and make sure you ignore the, the subdomains. Um, so yeah. So version control. Um, when you're writing code, how many people here use a version control system to manage their code? Okay, that was a little bit more like half. Um, I think this is the biggest single productivity gain that you can have if you write any kind of custom code. Any HTML, any CSS, any PHP, anything like that. Um, version control is, is almost a must. Um, uh, sometimes I'll, I'll run into an existing project where it's a little difficult to implement it uh, because it's, it's just old code on a server that I just have FTP access to and I'm trying to convince them to give me shell access to the, to the site. But, uh, but version control is, is very important. And I'm going to uh, do a little demo here to show um, uh, kind of a, a contrived example that I came up with. So I have uh, two different copies of the Milky Way template. I have a uh, Milky Way Messy uh, that we're going to start with. So, um, yeah, if you see here on the screen, uh, we've got several copies of index.php. We've got uh, index.php, index.php.back, .before table, .old, .old2, uh, copy of index.php. Um, so yeah, so uh, copy of index.php, um, you, know, you just have to have one of those. Um, index.php.back, uh, that was the original one that, that ships with Joomla, so we, we did a dot .back to uh, uh, make sure that we keep the back of that file. Um, and then, uh, you know, then we have a, an old dot .old. Um, this is right after dot .back where we uh, we remove the top position here, like we have the, the HTML comments, and uh, oh, we removed search and pathway because we didn't want them, and uh, you know we made another HTML comment there. Uh, then we went to uh, old two, um, <laughs> where we, we removed more of these module positions. You know, goodbye user three, and no more search and pathway and all that. And um, uh, then we just uh, I think we made a no. Okay, so uh, then we had a, another. One right before we did the table. Um, I'm not exactly sure what we did here. Um, and, and you know, you just have to uh, copy of index.php has a uh, you know a table here. For some reason, we're doing table-based layouts uh, in this template because we've just given up. And uh, and finally, we have the current index.php uh, with that table and. Uh, uh, just a few more modifications that uh, I can't readily find because uh, you know these extensions really don't tell me anything. And uh, since you know if this is you uh, keeping track of everything, you, you might maybe remember what what dot back was and dot old two was and and some Which of these. Other, older. Yeah, exactly. Older. Uh, uh, dot old. <laughs> dot old is the oldest. Older. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think, but uh, but exactly. So I made this, but if I give it to you, you have absolutely no idea what happened when, and you're relying on these comments in the HTML. We'd really rather not have comments in the HTML about our um, uh, about the, the way we developed the template because that's just more HTML that we're throwing out in the browser. So instead, um, it's better if you can use a version control system. So now I have a copy of Milky Way that is version controlled. And you'll notice in this copy that there is only one copy of um, index.php. Um, we still have the hideous table because I'm, I'm terrible at HTML and CSS and uh, I'm, I'm not that great at, at layout. But uh, you'll see there are no comments in here of what was removed or what happened. And uh, while at first glance that might be uh, a little bit less unhelpful, um, the good thing is that we actually have a record of that here. And uh, I'm using a version control system to keep track of this code. And the one I'm using is called uh, Git, um, which uh, you may have heard of. It's, uh, it's similar to, uh, uh, for instance, the, the Joomla project uses a version control system called SVN that you may have heard of. And uh, uh, that one's a little bit more centralized than Git, and I'll, I'll get into the, the differences in a little bit here. But uh, first, I'm going to go to the folder for my template, 
and show you how this version control system works. So if I go to uh, my templates directory, and I go to uh, the Milky Way version control, um, so there's my, uh, the listing of all the, the files in the system. Um, but say I wanted to uh, take a look at some of the changes that I made to this file in the past. Um, what I do is I, I type git log. And this gives me a log of all the different changes that I've made to this file over time. Uh, so uh, there's one here where I removed the uh, user 3 module position and one where I added that, that table for whatever reason that uh, I don't know why. Um, so if I wanted to um, get the version before I added that ugly table, um, what I would want to do is check out, uh, go to, uh, to Git and tell, me, tell it to say, here, go back in time and get that uh, the version of that uh, of index.php. So to do that, I would do a git checkout, and then uh, I'm pasting in this long hash here at the top for that file. And so now, uh, when I tab back to the uh, to my uh, text editor, uh, we now have the version of the um, of that index.php file only uh, right before we added the table. Um, so this way, and. Uh, uh, for a second now, uh, I'm going to go, <coughs> if you do git checkout, and then dot for current directory, uh, that will get you back to the current version. Um, and that should have done it. <laughs> Fun. Ah, git checkout master. Uh, because it created a different branch. Okay, so we're back uh, with the table. So if I make another change to this table, and, or to this template, and I want Git to record that change, um, I'm going to remove the table now, and uh, save the file. Um, but uh, if I want to, uh, what you can do before uh, telling the version control system about it is you can go to uh, several different files and make uh, a whole set of changes and you can have git recognize it all as one change. Um, in this case we're just doing one change to one file. So if I do git status it sees that I modified that index.php file from the copy that it has on hand and now I can uh, create what's called a commit. And the, the commit is going to give us a chance to record all the changes that happened um, in between the last commit and, uh, and the changes that I made just now and add a note to, to say what those changes were. And so that way it's going to appear in that git log and we'll be able to go back in time to this point where, where we have the code and uh, not be confused by .old and .back and .old2 and copy of index.php. git commit dash a dash m and uh, uh, I'm going to say removed ugly table. So now if I do git log, uh, we now have the, the removed ugly table commit that I just made up at the top, and we still can go back in time to all those other commits that I made previously um, that had the different versions of the code. Yeah. Uh, this gets is running on your local uh, host, I think, or your local. Yes, host. it is. Um, let's assume that they are. Uh, uh, it's it nice because you, you don't really need to have this virtual control. Mm -hmm. But what if uh, you're you cooperate with other people mm -hmm. and you have also SVN with the other uh, people? Can you use Git and SVN uh, together? Yes, you can. Okay. Um, there is a, a command called uh, uh, Git dash SVN. And what it'll do is it will get will go and uh, pull an SVN repository uh, remotely and uh, create that as a Git repository locally. And then you just make your changes and use Git like you normally do. Um, and then when you're ready, you just tell it to push back to the SVN repository. And uh, so yeah, that's uh, uh, the primary difference between SVN and Git is that Git can operate independently 
uh, on, so like I can uh, make those commits on uh, here on my laptop if I'm on an airplane and I don't have Wi-Fi and it's just me. Um, I can still use Git uh, to, to keep a, a history of everything I'm working on while I'm on the plane. So even if I'm on the plane and I want to go back in time like 40 minutes to when the code was working and uh, before I, I got distracted, um, I can still do that. Uh, that's, that's one thing that uh, SVN, uh, unless you host the, the SVN repository on your computer, um, uh, SVN usually requires a connection back to the server to make that commit uh, because SVN is designed uh, really to, keep, to make sure that, uh, that all the commits go back to the, the centralized one. Um, so uh, for, the, for the people who aren't as familiar with version control, um, did, uh, is there, do you have any questions or um, did that, it, this is really kind of a, a broad overview of version control. Um, I, is it for only other, I mean, is it Yeah, you can download it. Um, it's, uh, I can't remember the, the URL now um, offhand, but if you just Google for Git, uh, last four vaults, uh, the, the creator of Linux actually uh, started using or started make, creating Git to uh, to keep track of all of his work on the Linux kernel. Um, and and it's not the only version control system out there that you can use. Uh, obviously, I, I mentioned SVN, and that's the one that uh, Joomla, the, the Joomla project, currently uses to manage all the code for Joomla. Um, there are other ones uh, like uh, Mercurial and um, uh, Bazaar, and uh, you just need to find one that, that works for you and, uh, and, and helps you keep track of uh, your changes. There are a lot of uh, advanced features with version control that we didn't go over, but um, the main thing is that, that I find that's helpful with version control is that it allows me to keep that log of every change that I've made uh, to my code. And that way I can just go back in time and roll it back to the, the last uh, version that I knew that was good. Or uh, you know, if, I, if a bug crops up, uh, this has happened to me multiple times when I was working uh, on a project with some, some designers and some other people. And uh, we found that we had like a JavaScript conflict and we were wondering what happened. And it, we realized that back at this old version, it was uh, relying on a different version of, uh, of the jQuery uh, library. And because we had version control, we were able to roll back um, on our, our dev copy and, uh, and, and see what was, uh, how it was working, when it was working, and, uh, and we were able to fix it through there. <coughs> yeah, sorry, joke, but we were mentioning that actually we don't have to go uh, command line like that, that most uh, version control systems do have integration to most editors, so they yeah, have a user interface and so on. We might be good at that. But yeah. <laughs> 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 I'd love to. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yes. um, so that brings us to text editors and IDEs. Um, who in this room uses Notepad? to uh, edit text. Okay. Um, uh, so yeah, if you, uh, it's a really good idea to get uh, either a text editor or an IDE uh, for any code that you write. Uh, because what you're going to get uh, through a text editor is uh, just uh, a, a better awareness of the code that you're writing. Uh, so, for instance, here in this uh, PHP file, it can see that I'm not only writing PHP code, but it sees that I'm also creating HTML markup, and it's highlighting the, uh, the syntax. And that way, while I'm writing the code, if I, uh, uh, like, it'll, uh, it'll see that as I'm writing the code that I'm trying to start a tag here, and it'll make sure that I, um, that I close my tags properly. So. Uh, when I wrote table there, it started with a, a beginning, uh, an opening uh, arrow there. And when I close it, it has a closing arrow. And with that in place, I can then just collapse and expand that section of markup. And that way I can still, um, uh, I can clean up my, uh, uh, the code that I'm writing quickly and, and just focus on the, the part that I need to fix. Um, <clears throat> that is not all that you can do through a text editor. Um, 
The text editor that I use is uh, called TextMate. Well, I need to revert this. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> a different kind of version control, uh, control Z. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, so I, I'm using a text editor called TextMate. That's uh, it's Mac only, but there is a, another text editor for Windows uh, called the E Editor. That's uh, very similar and, and is uh, slightly compatible with some of the, the code that's in here. Um, but one of the things I like about TextMate is that it has bundle support. So if I go um, here and create a new file and uh, pull it in, into PHP context, I can hit PHP tab, and it starts uh, an opening PHP tag there in my in my document. Um, but what you can also do with uh, TextMate is it allows you to create your own bundles. So what I've done is I, I write a lot of components and uh, plugins and modules for Joomla. And I'm always creating a new controller or a new view or a new model or, or whatever. Uh, so what I do is I have a JView here. And when I hit tab, it starts that class name. And it highlights the part that I need to change. So if I change this to recipes. Uh, oh, OK, so if the name of the component was recipes, I can do that. And the view name is ingredients. Um, I just keep hitting tab through the different um, through the different blanks there, and it allows me to, to add the pieces that I need, and then it brings me right to the place where I need to start writing code. Um, another one that I have is uh, JValid. Um, I, I wrote this uh, bundle while I was doing both Joomla 1.0 and Joomla 1.5 code, so it has uh, support here for the, the old valid Moss, but uh, now the one I use is the, the JExec. And it just has all those pieces of code there so that I'm not uh, going to run into another file and copy and pasting. I'm not typing everything out by hand. It's error prone. It's the same code that I'm using over and over again. But it's all available through uh, these bundles. So if I go to bundles and uh, Joomla. Actually, if I go to the bundle editor. Show my editor. I have a, a Joomla bundle here. And This allows me to just add all of my code snippets. And then through, uh, through this box here, I can control what the shortcut <coughs> is uh, for that snippet of code. So I, I have one for, uh, for getting the database. Uh, I have one called JFactory. And I have a lot of snippets of code on this JFactory. So I have every JFactory method that's available. So that whenever I type JFactory and tab, it brings up a menu of all those different snippets, and then I can just pick the one I want. Uh, so aside from uh, the bundles for uh, code snippets, there are also bundles that connect to your version control system. So um, if I hit Control-Shift-G, uh, that pulls up a menu that interacts with Git, the, the version control system I use. So what I can do is uh, go to the, the log option here on the menu. And instead of going to the command line, I can pull everything here through TextMate. And it will show me all the different messages that I would see on the command line. And also, I can hit this plus button, and it will show what changes got made. So I can see here that I removed that ugly table, and there it was. And it appears in kind of pinkish red. Uh, it might be a little hard to see on the screen. But uh, if I go here to another commit, uh, where's one more added? Here's, okay, here's where I added this table. Uh, that one appears in green, so I know that that's uh, a chunk of code that I added to this file. Is, is the Git uh, text and download also? Yeah. Um, I think it's one that you have to download. But, uh, but yeah, like TextMate has a, uh, uh, a get bundle bundle that goes to their server and gives you a list of all the bundles that you can get for TextMate. And then uh, uh, the Joomla one is not in there. That's one that I created. Um, and I, I have it on my blog somewhere that I, I need to update. 
But uh, and that's one thing you can package bundles up. Uh, basically, you just drag them in their folder and uh, and then send them to, to other people to use. Yeah, there's also a bundle available for templating. Uh, yeah, uh, Rick. Uh, Rick made that one. Rick yeah. uh, Blaylock. Or is that the same? Um, if you are using uh, an ID like uh, NetBeans, uh -huh. uh, are there uh, bundles for NetBeans as well? I mean, I think it's a uh, uh, tool to collect something. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. And, and that's kind of another thing. Like um, uh, some of the, the IDs do have support for the same thing. And uh, at one of the DCPHP conferences, we had uh, kind of a big uh, uh, IDE versus text editor panel. Where we all got together and we had a, an Emacs guy there and a VI guy there and a TextMate person and, and somebody that uses Eclipse and Zen Studio and, and all that. And we, we basically came to no conclusions except that everybody has what, they, what they're comfortable with. Um, so uh, IDE East uh, are, are um, a little bit more geared towards people who are used to uh, compiled languages like, P, uh, like C++. And uh, although not exclusively so, um, uh, but what I found, at least what I found with IDEs for the most part, is that uh, for for me personally, for the kind of development that I do, um, I find that a lot of the tools that I need to be working with need to be on the browser side because I'm dealing with a lot of the output that happened after I uh, did something in the database. Uh, but I, um, but it does seem like the, the IDEs are getting better. Uh, for, for PHP now. Uh, because that was the problem, is like you run a PHP file and it's done running. Like it, it just starts up and then stops. And it's, it's a little bit more difficult when you're working with an IDE, I find at least. Um, just um, I said the, the other two, the edges and IDs, is, is the result of things like NetBeans and Eclipse, because they've got a little bit more context about them, they'll actually use the code inspection. So that is, is, yeah. Whereas you're doing having to download bundles for the, the, the J factory stuff, if you've got the code in there and inspect it and find all those functions and parameters, so you can just start tapping along and find stuff. That's, that's a major advantage of the, the IDEs, is uh, most of them, uh, they, they work more on a project style basis, and when you have a project defined there, it'll scan the entire code base of Joomla and uh, check for all the functions that are defined. And then as you're beginning to type the name of a function, it'll start auto-suggesting like Google's auto-suggest, and then you can pick your, your function that way. Um, so definitely, if you're, if you're not as familiar with the, the Joomla code base, and uh, you're, you're familiar with like Zen Studio or Eclipse or NetBeans, uh, that's definitely a feature that, that can help you. Um, so that, that yeah. Um, so those are uh, text editors and IDEs. Okay, uh, so a different kind of IDE is, is this Selenium IDE, uh, which is a browser side. What, what Selenium is designed to do is to help automate uh, user interface testing. Um, what it does is it allows you to record yourself um, <coughs> doing things in the browser and then play back those actions. The, the idea behind uh, Selenium uh, is that you, uh, you record all these test suites and, uh, and you do this automated uh, system where whenever you make a, a change to your HTML or your UI, um, you can have a, a computer go back and play those and test to make sure that all the same elements are there and that uh, you, uh, you got back the, the same uh, uh, results that you were expecting. Um, I am not quite at that level of automation for the stuff that I do, and uh, I don't write these extremely often, but, um, but they can be useful. So uh, let's uh, take a look at an example here of a, a test that I ran earlier. So I have this form that's just uh, kind of a, a user profile form, uh, you know, your name, your address, city, state. Uh, country, postal code, email, all that stuff. If I were uh, creating a component right now out of this and I wanted to test a bunch of submissions to the database, typically I'd have to go to the form, start typing in my name, start typing in my address, start typing in my country, 
and you know do this each and every time that I make a change to the data to the, the PHP code that I'm writing in the back end that I'm trying to test. And uh, this is going to wear me out fairly quickly. So what I do instead is I open uh, Selenium IDE. And Selenium IDE is a uh, plugin that you can get for Firefox that will, uh, what it will do is it will record you as you are, um, uh, as you click on things in the browser and as you type things. And then you can save that and play it back. So if I go to uh, Tools in Firefox and Selenium IDE, uh, which I downloaded earlier, um, it pops up this window where I can either record or I can load an old one. So first one, uh, I did a, a test earlier where I, I created one. Yeah, this is it. And uh, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit play. And it allows you to do it either fast or slow or pause during it. And it's going to uh, do everything that I typed and clicked. So when I clicked play there, it filled in my name and my address and my area of interest and all those fields. And say I was adding the availability and age fields to, to test. Uh, now I don't have to go back through and type in all that stuff every time. Um, I find this... Uh, uh, extremely helpful when you're using things like uh, JavaScript and doing form validation, um, especially if you're doing something on the front end that needs e extensive testing. And just to show you, um, I'm going to do a new test case uh, to show how uh, you can record yourself. So I'm going to start localhost and I'm going to hit record. And uh, now I'm going to type in a, uh, somebody else. Let me make sure that this recording is going. Yeah, okay, so it's, it's recording me as I'm typing in these different uh, places. Yeah. And then, uh, none. It's busy. Okay, so I, I recorded that. And uh, now I'm just going to start blank again. And then I can just hit play again. Oh, okay, so that time it did both, because I, whoa. <laughs> Thank you, Mac. All right. Um, so since I had two tests open there, it, it played both of them. Uh, let me close out the, uh, the other one. Okay, so I accidentally uh, killed that. But uh, so let me try this one more time. So I'm going to hit record. Nope. This is the one thing. It, I think it starts on record when you um, open it up the window for the first time. So I'm going to record. Now, if I refresh this page again and hit play, it goes back and uh, runs that test again and, and fills out the form. Um, so the, the one time that I used this uh, most recently, I was building a form for uh, a pharmaceutical company, uh, or actually it was a marketing company that was doing work for a pharmaceutical co company, and um, uh, they were trying to find people who had rheumatoid arthritis uh, to do a drug trial. And they had like 23 screens of questions for these people to click. And uh, to prevent myself from getting arthritis from just writing all this, I, I wrote a Selenium test to uh, fill out a good portion of the survey so I could uh, get to the end and do the different things that would disqualify me from it and, uh, and to test to make sure that my, my logic was going correctly. Um, the one thing you need to Keep in mind when you're using Selenium IDE is that it is not keeping track of, when it plays everything back, it's not keeping track of your exact mouse position. Um, think of Selenium IDE um, if you do accessible websites, 
or a graceful degradation, degradation and, and those sorts of concepts. Uh, think of Selenium IDE as a blind user. It, it only sees the HTML and it knows what elements got clicked and what you typed, but it doesn't know the exact position. So if you're trying to test something that's, uh, that's relying on exact positions, uh, this isn't going to help as much, but it will help if you have a, a long form that you're just trying to fill out and, and get to a certain spot. Okay, how many people use uh, Firebug? Everybody, basically. Yeah. Um, okay, so how many people use Fire PHP? Aha. Okay, so uh, we'll go through uh, Firebug quickly here. Uh, I wanted to. Okay, but anyway, uh, so. Uh, is everyone familiar with uh, console.debug for JavaScript? How many people? Uh, okay, okay. So let's go over uh, Firebug a little bit first. Um, so I think everyone's done this uh, where you inspect the HTML and you can change, uh, change the difference, uh, your HTML directly live without refreshing the browser. If I do uh, turn this into a, an OL, and that turns it into ordered list instead of unordered. And, uh, and like editing your CSS on the fly. So for instance, I can uh, go here and take off certain uh, CSS classes off my, my elements and, uh, and see how the CSS is being com uh, computed and laid out. Um, uh, has everyone, uh, let's see here, to script right console. So uh, for console.debug, um, if you take a look at, uh, I'm going to pull up this uh, this test component I wrote. Uh, common examples. That was it. So for Firebug. Um, I, I'm loading this Firebug view, and it's loading Firebug.js, and um, I, I wrote some MooTools JavaScript here that uh, just does a basic AJAX call, goes to the server, and uh, gets some, some data back, and brings it back as a, a JSON object. And um, once that JSON object is loaded back from the server, what I'm using here is console.debug. And that allows me to um, uh, to take any variable in JavaScript and send it here to the to the console. So uh, what I did for this specific example, um, I just loaded a um, uh, a module record from the database and sent it back as a JSON object. <laughs> And so uh, if you're ever having trouble uh, debugging your JavaScript, this is uh, extremely helpful for just throwing variables out. Um, instead of uh, typically what you might do is maybe alert um, in the middle, and that can get to be very annoying if you have to click through like five different alerts uh, of things you're debugging. Uh, you can also... Um, does everyone, has everyone used the, uh, how many people here have used YSLOW? Okay, about half. Um, down here at the bottom, uh, YSLOW is actually a uh, add-on on top of uh, Firebug. And it's a uh, extension that Yahoo developed that keeps track of uh, uh, how much data that your, uh, your web requests are requiring. So here, uh, this shows it was uh, 132.9 kilobytes. And uh, when I hit refresh here down at the bottom, it shows uh, 0 .705, 0 0.705 seconds. And that's how long it took from beginning to end to load all the different assets, all the images, JavaScript, CSS files, and, uh, and HTML. Um, so that's just something you can use to uh, keep track of how long uh, the server's taking. So uh, I was having a problem 
uh, just the other week with the server that was taking an incredibly long time to uh, respond. So instead of just telling the server admin, hey, it's taking a long time, I'm saying it's taking 30 seconds for this uh, request to complete. Uh, because I was able, able to time it there uh, through the, the Y slug. How does that differ to the way of the file work? Huh? Because uh, the file work monitors the load times for things as well. Uh, yeah. Why slow? Uh, also, that, it's a good thing to point out. Uh, it gives you these graphs. Uh, it gives you the summary of what's taking a long time to load. And it gives you some information back on, on how you can improve. Um, typically, the, the default Joomla uh, copies will get Fs on all this section here. And if you don't have an extremely high traffic website, um, you usually don't have to worry about like a, a content delivery network or, uh, or, or some of these other things. But um, these are things where if you're, if you're experiencing a high load, you might want um, uh, to look into narrowing some of these things down, like making fewer HTTP requests and um, like if you're loading a, a bunch of small images, uh, use the, uh, the sprite method where you uh, put several images in, into the same image and then use CSS to uh, get a position on uh, that single one and that can uh, help with the load times. Um, and the net panel can also show you uh, missing elements. Um, I'm trying to remember if I had this in the, in the demo here. So when I hit refresh here, this net panel is going to show me every uh, HTTP request that was made for every image, every JavaScript, every CSS file, uh, everything, including my Ajax call. And as you're loading, it will show you these bars to show you uh, how long it took each element to come back. So the longest was the, uh, the main HTML file from Joomla itself, and that took uh, 124 milliseconds, and all the rest were like a millisecond piece. Um, this isn't such a great example because this is a local host environment, and you everything just came back in like one millisecond. Uh, but if I had an internet connection here, I could pull up CNN.com or uh, some other large site, and you would see the different uh, bars here as they load the, the images and the flash and the, the JavaScript. Um, and then if it can't find an item, if you get a, a 404 code back for the HTTP request or any other error code, like a 400 or 500 series error, um, the item that failed will appear in red. So that way if you're trying to, uh, if you notice that you're having a JavaScript error, um, it's possible maybe that you're not loading one of the JavaScript files you need. And if that's the case, um, it'll appear here in red that Joomla tried to load up a JavaScript file that didn't exist, and uh, you have some work to do. Okay, so um, I think everyone was kind of generally familiar with Firebug, but less so is uh, FirePHP. And uh, what FirePHP does is um, I uh, showed you the, the console.debug for JavaScript um, just a, a few moments ago. But there's also um, this uh, extension called FirePHP that allows you to do essentially the same thing only from your, your PHP uh, code while it's running. And uh, this is extremely helpful when you're in situations where uh, you are doing AJAX requests and you want to dump out your variables to see what's going on. Um, FirePHP is not something that's specific to Joomla. It's a general library that's available out there for any PHP project you're using. Uh, there are plugins that are already available for Joomla and for Drupal and for WordPress and uh, Zen Framework and pretty much every major PHP project out there. Um, so uh, let's take a, a look at FirePHP. <coughs> Okay, so first uh, I'm going to go to the back end of this site and, uh, and show you the, the plugin. Uh, the um, the Canaform team actually released this plugin that I'm using now uh, that makes it very easy for you to put FirePHP in your, your Joomla installation. Uh, I cannot spell. 
Oh no, I went back too far. Okay, so it's a, if you go to the plugin manager, um, it's a, a system plugin that you can download. It's called JFire PHP. And uh, typically the settings are like this, where it will limit it uh, uh, by default. Uh, the settings are like this, where it will limit the functionality to Joomla's uh, debug uh, mode, and it won't give you the verbose output. Um, the verbose, uh, I, I tend to leave, uh, to set this to no uh, for the debug mode, because I only use the, the JFire PHP on my dev site. Um, and then now, and I'm not always running debug mode on my dev site, uh, but I always want it on. And then the verbose output, um, what this does is no matter what, whether or not there is a, a call to fire PHP or not, um, it will always, if you set it to yes, it will always kind of show the status in, uh, in Firebug so that you know that for, uh, fire PHP is running and, and everything's ready to go. Um, so uh, I actually wrote an article about this on howtojoomla.net. Uh, so if you want to go back later and, and figure out how to install it and configure it and the, the different options, um, uh, you can look that up and, and not have to scribble notes very quickly. What's the site you mentioned? Huh? What was the site you mentioned? Uh, Howtojoomla.net. It's the, um, uh, a site where I write some uh, blog posts with, uh, with Corey, uh, Corey, it's Corey Webb's website. And uh, he writes some articles as well as uh, some other uh, Joomla developers. So we have this example here of JFire PHP in action. So in this case, I did not do an Ajax call, but you will notice here in the console, there's uh, the, the JFire PHP status here and uh, this, uh, this text admin that came from uh, using JFire PHP. So let's go to the code itself and, uh, and see how you use this. So here for uh, Fire PHP, um, I have a, a typical uh, JModel class here that uh, where I'm uh, pulling out all the, uh, in, in this query I'm pulling out the ID, username, and email of uh, every user in the system. So back here, uh, this view is just spitting out every user that's in this uh, installation uh, with their given name and their, their username. Uh, so uh, this is a, a pretty typical model except down here at the bottom before I do the return is a, a call to FB. And FB is, uh, is the firebug function that you can use to, uh, you can pass in any, uh, any data here and it will send that data to your firebug console. So that way if you don't want to uh, mess up your view and you want to see exactly what's happening, what, what, what I've done in the past is use something like print underscore R or, or var dump. <coughs> or uh, one of those functions in, in PHP that will just dump out your variables. Uh, but that can get messy to read and sometimes you have to go view source to, to see it because the, the CSS of your template messes everything up. Uh, but when I use uh, fire PHP uh, through fire, uh, the FB function takes that data. What, what I used here was just the first row um, of the data set and just get that username in the first row. And since that was admin, it printed admin here. Um, so uh, this is nice because it helps keep it out of our template. Um, but where it becomes a little bit more crucial is when I'm doing either a JSON call or, or an Ajax call where the file that I'm returning back <coughs> is, uh, is a file type where if I add any more output to that file, it will destroy the file. Uh, so if you're generating uh, XML, JSON, PDF, um, an image, you, know, you can't use printr or, or vardump there because if you do, it will wreck the entire format of the file and you won't be able to read it. Um, but that pre presents a problem because if you're trying to debug a model or something while you're generating uh, one of those file formats, 
Um, it, it becomes kind of impossible, except when you're using FirePHP. So, in my other example here, for my FirePHP JSON example, uh, I've got another plugin here, by the way, uh, that uh, I, I just found out about a few weeks ago that uh, it, when you, it detects that you're using, um, when you're viewing a JSON file, um, instead of just displaying the, the plain text, uh, in JavaScript, it will uh, interpret that and give you this nice foldable um, set of, uh, of uh, it, it will nest all the objects and, and make it so that it's easier to, to view here. Um, I'm trying to remember what the name of this extension is offhand um, and I can't Bug me later about it and I'll, I'll let you know. Um, but anyway, so now with this view, um, in this case, I wanted to do, again, I just wanted to get that first name, uh, first username of the first row in that result set uh, from that model. So if I go to Firebug, uh, you'll notice it's here again. And if I, uh, you know, if I tried here instead to do uh, print arm, it destroys the, the JSON. I, I get a syntax error here um, from the, the JSON interpreter and it, it can't read it because I did that print our output right in the middle of the JSON file. But when I use uh, FB, it doesn't do that. Um, it, it parses correctly and I'm able to debug the data that's behind that JSON call. In case you're interested, what it's doing is it is adding more HTTP headers to that call. So that way the data for uh, JFirePHP is being added uh, to these HTTP headers here um, in, in the request. And then that way it stays in the headers and not in the content body. And the, the content body stays clean. So I'd say in 99% of cases, this is okay. Uh, because you're, you're usually using this to debug something in Joomla. Uh, but if you were creating more of a web service where the, the HTTP headers really, really mattered, uh, you might run into a case where this would be a problem uh, because you're adding more uh, HTTP headers that might not necessarily belong there. But uh, for most, uh, for, for my intents and purposes, uh, this really works when I'm trying to de de uh, debug something in Joomla and I, I just want to throw out uh, some data. Any uh, questions on FirePHP? Yeah, um, uh, I use uh, JDOM. JDOM? Uh, it's also uh, sends the, uh, the objects to the screen. Uh, do you know what it's uh, Yeah, I, I, uh, from what I understand, JDOM puts it directly on the, in your content. You get a pop-up. Oh, does it have a pop-up? Yeah. Okay. I think this one is really nice. Yeah, and I, I've only showed you some of the features of it. Um, like you can uh, you can label uh, the variables that you're dumping. So I'm going to call this username uh, here by passing in another parameter. So it did username colon and then uh, the the variable that it dumped there. So that way you can label the variables as you go um, and. Here, if I also uh, say I wanted to do the whole entire row. Uh, so now I'm just dumping out this data, and it's going to dump out the entire result set. Uh, a little bit more complex than just one uh, text field there. It, it shows you kind of these ellipses here because it, it can't show everything. But if you click on that, it shows you this nicely formatted uh, representation of that object. These are modifications for HTML headers, things, and things and casting like, uh, external files, huh? images, or anything else like that. It's not going to break the like that. Right, right. Like if you if you're using this to create an image in Joomla, yeah. um, you can send you can use JFire PHP safely without it breaking the image, because all this data here that's in this uh, that you're seeing in this inspector is being sent back as HTTP headers. 
Um, so yeah, so that's available not only for, for Joomla, but for other frameworks and, and any uh, PHP application. Uh, there's much more in, in FirePHP, uh, like it has uh, uh, support for exception handling and stack traces and, and all sorts of things. Uh, but this is what I, I use it for the most part right now, is uh, just dumping out variables uh, without, uh, without putting it directly in my output. Any other questions before we move on? Okay. Uh, I should have tested this on a uh, smaller screen. But in any event, uh, one of the more uh, mundane things possibly that you need to do is to configure PHP INI to discover errors. Um, what I found, uh, especially on, you want to do this on your dev site and not on your live site, uh, but what I found is a lot of, uh, some of the extensions I have downloaded, even commercial ones uh, that are supported, uh, have notices when, when you turn on. Um, and what's happening with the notice is that you are using a, uh, uh, you're trying to use a variable that hasn't been declared yet. And that can lead to issues later because you're assuming that uh, uh, you, you don't really know what type it is. And later on down the road, you might set that without realizing what it's doing to the code. Um, so uh, you want to make sure that all the notices and warnings and errors are being reported in, in some way or fashion. Uh, because otherwise, uh, if you've ever uh, run into a white screen, on a certain host, that means the error reporting is not being sent to the browser. Um, it might be being logged somewhere, but uh, you know, you're still, there's still an error happening there and you're not knowing what it is. Uh, so uh, there are three uh, PHP INI settings that uh, you, you want to be concerned about when you're doing error reporting. And uh, those are, uh, error underscore reporting, uh, display errors, and error log. Uh, the error reporting one is, is the one that I, um, uh, that I get a little frustrated about because uh, people, uh, by default, PHP has notices hidden and uh, you want to reset that so that it displays all the errors when you're doing development. So that way you can stop yourself from writing bugs before they happen. So, um, I always reset the error reporting variable. Um, I think my PHP INI here has it. Yeah, so I always set uh, on my developments, uh, servers, and sites, I set report, error reporting to E underscore all. The default value is E underscore all and a uh, little tilde E notice. And what that does is it takes out the notices, but I want to see them. So um, I always go through and, and remove this bit so that it, it displays all of every error and, and I get them and, and fix everything before it goes to production. Um, display errors is, is another one. So uh, whenever you get that white screen, uh, what's happening is display errors is set to off and PHP is just not doing any output. If you have a, a, an error that's uncoverable, like a, a warning or just a fatal exception rather than a notice, like uh, maybe you tried to connect to a database that isn't there or um, you just wrote some code that's not valid PHP. Um, if you have display errors off, you will get a, a blank screen. But if you have display errors on, it will show you the errors right there on screen um, but regardless, what you can do is use error log to tell PHP, I want to log all of my errors in a certain file so that I can go back and see them and not necessarily display them uh, uh, on the front end. And that's very useful for your live site because you want to turn errors off for your live site, but you still want to keep track of those errors if they happen uh, because then that way you can uh, figure out what happened and, and go fix it. Justin, is there any admin plugin that will let me see the error without? 
Um, uh, I'm not aware of a plugin that will let you see the error log. Um, however, you it's usually just a flat log on the server. Yeah. So if you, if you have something like EXT Explorer or, uh, or one of the Joomla components that lets you browse the, the file system on your server, um, that's an idea for someone if, the, if you want to create it, like a PHP error log viewer. Um, and, but yeah, uh, typically in many shared host environments um, and depending on, on what you end up with, uh, you may or may not have access uh, to, to PHP INI. Uh, one thing uh, you can use to check though is PHP info. And uh, this is just a, a file that I wrote here um, under examples. Yeah, so PHP info.php. Um, Simplest PHP file you'll write. It's uh, a function that will display all of uh, all of your PHP settings. Uh, this is helpful only if you cannot get into your Joomla Super Administrator backend, uh, because you don't want to leave this file lying around on the server, because uh, uh, anyone in the world can just go and see. Oh, you have a PHP info.php file, and uh, and check out what your configuration is. So. Uh, Instead of doing that, it's better to uh, go to the administrator backend, go to uh, help, system info, and uh, PHP information. And this has the exact same information you'll find in PHP info. And this is where you can check your error reporting level, uh, whether or not you have display errors on, and uh, whether or not you have an error log uh, somewhere that's keeping track of the, the errors. And then that way you can find the file where the errors are being logged and you can go and browse to, to search for it. Um, how am I doing on time? Uh, do we... 345. 345? Okay. Um, I, I don't remember specifically when this ends. 4, four o'clock? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Um, I think I'll wrap this up then and, uh, and leave some time for, for some questions. Um, But first, I'm going to go over error logs. Uh, one thing that I found that uh, how many people here use Joomla's error log system? Joomla. Ah. Uh, so that's one thing. How many people know? Before I mentioned it just now, knew that there was a, PH, uh, a Joomla error log system. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like yeah, two. Uh, and, and I didn't really. I, I kind of knew that it was out there, but didn't really ever explore it until I read uh, James Kennard's uh, Joomla Development Cookbook and, uh, and found that it's actually really useful uh, because what will happen um, if you can't get... Uh, so we have uh, Fire PHP that I showed you and, uh, and you can even do var dump or, or whatever to, to get variables, um, but you'll very frequently have a situation where you are, say you're logging in. And what's going to happen when you log in is you're going to post that login to a, a certain component and it's going to redirect you after it completes the login. But if you're trying to, uh, for instance, I've been uh, developing some authentication plugins to uh, link back to some third-party databases. Uh, so what's happening is I need to get some uh, debug output from that process before it does the redirect. Um, so you can either stop it in the, in the middle of the redirect or uh, you can log that information to a flat file log so you can go back later and take a look at it rather than stopping the process, uh, which, kind of, which interferes with uh, what you're doing. So I have here, um, there are no real errors on this, uh, this page I'm going to show, but if I go to the PHP error log, um, oh no wait, this is a PHP error log. <coughs> Ah, I was on the wrong uh, page. So uh, this is the Joomla logging system. And uh, so like I'm saying, there, Joomla has, actually has a logging system. And it's uh, pretty quick, uh, simple to use. You, uh, you call jimport joomla.error.log. 
uh, to load up the library, uh, you get an instance of the JLog object, and you uh, write the name of your log file on there. And you'll notice that this log file here ends in a .php extension, and that's important because all of the logs are going to be written to the slash logs directory in your, P in your Joomla site, and that is um, it, it world accessible. And then you can create entries in your log, as many as you need, and it's just an array of the, the error level. I always just hit one or something. Um, you can give it a status, and then you can also give it a comment. And uh, so I'm using, I'm actually using printr here, and passing in the true, uh, passing in true is the second, uh, the second parameter there. And what that does is it just tells printr not to actually send the output to the browser, but to return it um, from the function. And then that way that output's there in the array and it's not being sent back in the output. And it, it gets uh, added to that array so that it can get added to the log. So uh, when you're ready, you just call log and the add entry member function of that object, and you pass in the array, and then it just adds that as a log entry to uh, the log file here. So I'm going to click on this logging example. And this is just a, um, one of the other, uh, another variation on that, uh, that view that we had from earlier that displays all the different users in the system. Uh, only this one is doing some logging. So if I go to the logs folder and pull up first user.php, it is uh, first we have the, the die to, to make sure that nobody can get to this file directly from the outside world. Uh, so, like if I tried to go to, um, this is not the, the log that I was thinking of, or was it? I think it is. Oh. I pull that up again. Yeah, this is it. Okay. Um, so you see, uh, today we have one for. Um, I, I, I ran this log several times earlier, uh, a few days ago. Uh, we have, for the, the request that I made just now, uh, there's one for May 31st at this time. It has the error, log, uh, error level of one, and then it records the IP address. And then it has the uh, debug output that I had here. So uh, again, I'm just pulling that first username from the system, the, the admin user, and it, it logs it here so that if this was a request like a, an authentication request where I want to let it complete its uh, redirect, um, I could just go back here and see what the results were of that error. Um, so if I go to uh, the workflow examples, uh, no examples, how uh, examples, uh, here under logs, models. So this is the, the logging that I was using. And in this case, if I wanted to log the entire array, I would do print R. And uh, add true. So that it doesn't send it to the browser and it uh, returns it. Actually, I want to return the first one. And now when I go back to the browser, hit refresh, and go back to the log, it actually shows the, uh, the entire object there, so that I can uh, do some debugging. So uh, one more quick one before we leave. And it is uh, xdebug. Um, and xdebug is a PHP extension that you can add. Um, you, you must have access to, uh, to Peckle, and that's the PHP extension library service, uh, because what Xdebug does is it, uh, it interacts with the PHP runtime and helps you um, uh, 
gives you a lot of diagnostic output on uh, how long different pieces of different code is taking and uh, allows you to do some more advanced logging. Um, so if I go to um, this view, Okay, so uh, you can do X debug start trace and stop trace, and these are two functions that become available when you install X debug through uh, through that uh, process. And what it will do is it will show you each and every function call that happened in PHP between when you started that start trace and when you stopped it. So it's showing here the, the time that PHP called JView get and did all this, uh, fetched all the objects out of my SQL, and called all these different functions just to display that view. Um, so this can be very helpful, especially if you're working with code that you didn't write, and you're trying to figure out what's being executed when. Uh, I, I find this, I've found this extremely helpful for, for those situations. And then um, you can also tell it to, uh, to do a profile where it, uh, for the entire request, it will log all of the, uh, all the information about that request to this output file. And then if you use a, a service like kcashgrind, hey it'll show you what percentage of the time PHP spent uh, within a certain function. So uh, it's shown here in, uh, in the system debug function, it spent 27.98% uh, uh, within that function. But down under like this JTable load call, um, it just spent 1.76%. Uh, and not all these percentages add up to 100% because you have, uh, while this debug function is running, you might also have that JTable function running as well but it, it provides some very detailed information about what's being called when, how long it's taking, how much memory is being taken, and, and those sorts of things. Uh, there's really a, a lot more to xDebug that, that you can do, uh, but we are running uh, short on time. Uh, so if you want to get in contact with me, uh, my website is uh, jlblanc.com with uh, two L's. Uh, my email address is contact at jlblanc, and my Twitter handle is jlblanc. Five minutes, we're, we're wrapping it up. Is that okay? Huh? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. And then uh, also, uh, shameless self plugs, uh, I wrote a Joomla extension training video series. Um, so if you have clients that uh, need to, to learn just basic Joomla functionality, here's how to create articles and uh, create the, you know, configure things, uh, you can send them through that. Um, I've written a book on extension development for Joomla 1.5 um, that takes you through just creating a, a basic component, uh, a module, and a plugin. And I'm also available for freelance projects. So uh, thank you uh, for listening and for, for participating. Questions or anything they want me to go back over again? Uh, yeah, please. Um, do you know of any uh, packages, uh, or I mean, components or something, tools uh, to create packages uh, of components which are developing? Um, I think Andrew Reddy had one at one time, like a manifest maker. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think it went all the way of doing something like uh, like. Uh, I know, uh, I think some of the Nuku guys use uh, Ant from the Java world to automate their, their build process. And, and yeah, that's something that, uh, that's definitely worth looking into. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you have any uh, source? Do you know any source of things that uh, where to uh, find more about Ant and uh, use it for something like this? Mm -hmm. 
Um, I, I think he talked to uh, Matthias. Um, is that his name? Uh, yeah, Matthias. Yeah. Matthias. Um, I know at one point he did a blog post uh, on how to use Ant to uh, to generate a, a Joomla component or a generate a package for it. What? Or Fig? Yeah. The uh, Fig is a, a PHP um, alternative to Ant. Yeah. Um, December 2008 is when the, the, the second edition came out. Uh, that's when there were two editions of the book. Um, you want to get the 08. <laughs> yeah, you want to get the 2008 if you, if you get it. Uh, they, they still sell the, the old one, and I've been trying to get them to stop because it's old. It's also because the book of James Henry is totally rewritten, and it will be brought out next week. Ah, yes. Uh, and and uh, they're now set. They're not, there's not no uh, uh, think nothing about it on paper yet. Mm -hmm. Only that, that they have a, a sale price on uh, on the old book. Yeah. So yeah. they're done with the old book, yeah. now, but it's totally rewritten and uh, from 460 pages to 750. Yeah. With all the all the examples are no foos and no bars and. Ah. Nice. Yeah. I, I haven't had a chance to look at it. Um, but yeah, like if you're looking at picking up the framework book, Fine. make sure you get the newer one that's coming out. Um, I, I, I talked to James and he was just getting overwhelmed and didn't have time. Well, it's, there's that and one six is coming out soon enough that we, we really want to do something with that rather than one five. Uh, but also, uh, James Kennard's uh, Joomla Development Cookbook is another good book to, to pick up if you have a chance. Um, it has a lot of like the the logging uh, I found in that that I had never really explored before, and um, there are some other uh, tips in there and there uh, and things that uh, the Joomla development cookbook. Yeah, yeah, I, I found that it uh, almost it, it arrived one day, and I had some issue where I was trying to remember.